Hey everybody, today we are going to be joining our friends at Warped Wing for an awesome behind the scenes tour of everything they have going on back there. We're gonna take a real big deep dive on the amazing canning line that they have. And we're also gonna kinda get like a super brewery tour. We're gonna really dive into the cellar. We're gonna look at some of the operation of their brew house. And yeah, as always, it's just meant to give you some behind the scenes look at how these things happen. I'm always a big believer that anytime you can see how somebody else is getting things done, it's a way to really add things to your tool belt as a brewer or even just as a craft beer fan. So anyways, let's go ahead and start diving in by starting with sanitizing the canning line. Okay, so right now they are prepping the canning line to start filling and they are running a diluted mixture of parasitic acid for this. And they have a cool little setup off the bottom of this tank. This is the line that's gonna be going to the bright tank. This is drawing off the bottom, going around this hose into the face of this pump, and then it's being pumped out, and then up this insulated line. Boom, and it's running all the way over here to the canning line. And then it is returning back down this stainless line here. Back to this tank. So this is our loop. Remember when we're running a CIP like this, this is all about the appropriate temperature, time, flow rate, and chemical concentration. So they're running that circulation, and when that's done, they're gonna be able to purge that line out and get ready to start rocking. They will go ahead and hook up. We are going into, uh, we are coming out of this bright tank today. We're coming out of that guy. I'll show you that as we go. Okay, so this is the DPAL, and what this is gonna do is it is going to receive full skids full of cans and then break them down and then kind of start this conveyor belt running through over to the filler this is rad man this is rad and this is this warmer which is really crazy. I've never seen anything like this, okay? So it's basically just a big heating table that's gonna be running all of the beers through. There, and then it's gonna run them back out. The idea being is that it's going to take them closer to room temperature so they won't sweat as much. Pretty slick. So let's dive into this DPAL a little bit. You can see how it's drawing these cans down the conveyor and kind of pushing full sheets at a time out. And then you can see over here that it's kind of shoving these along and then it's gonna be lifting up the next row of cans. We'll get a shot from the side as well. Feeding down through there, going over to rotary. Very cool. Yeah. Building those boxes. Yeah, I mean there is no vibration up here. This is this is slick. This is slick. Oh, I see. So are those case boxes manually loaded over there? Okay. That's crazy. That's crazy. Something else that I haven't seen before is this automatic lid um, dispenser or, or feed for this canning line. Very, very cool. It's running in here over my shoulder and it's gonna track all the way around over to a machine that they'll fill individual slots with 
the sleeves of lids and then it feeds them through. It's pretty sweet. Let's go take a look at it. And so this is gonna feed like a whole new sleeve into the, oh, you can see it right there. Yeah. Gosh, it's crazy so to watch down, how fast once that it gets drops. down to about here, yep. the next one will kick in, right? And all that's happening is this belt pusher, there's a, there's a tensioning device down there that's monitoring the pressure yep. on the lid. Yep. So when it drops, the belt pusher will turn on, push them up there, and then as soon as this stack drops below, here yep. it'll push the next one in so it's going to do that. interesting man it's crazy how it feeds through there yeah and then there's 70 pockets in the thing so it'll just rotate around the guys will load it up with however many sleeves and lids we need yep. before we run and, and is this run. your is that your sensor the one right down there no it's this thing right it, here okay it's that cylinder yeah. right there okay i mean if it hits that sensor down there yep then then there's a problem Right, oh, it'll be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I found this yeah. in a scrap yard. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we bought it. Uh, it came out of a Pepsi plant. Okay. And uh, I hired my friend Chris from up in Michigan. Uh, he does maintenance uh, at a big baby food plant up in, in Michigan. I was like, yep. dude, do you think you can help me yeah. rectify this thing? And it just needed a couple of I.O. cards, and we had to pull some old wiring out of it that yeah. talked to other machines, and they ran. Very sweet, man. Very yeah. sweet. I have not seen one like that before. It's very cool. Uh, the largest line that I've worked on is the one at Sonder, where we're filling individual sleeves into it. This machine runs fast enough that if they were to do that, they used to have to feed a sleeve into it about every three minutes. So you can see something like this is kind of necessary. Uh, it's using an x-ray to look through the can. If it sees liquid, then it says, hey, the can's filled appropriately. Yeah. And if it doesn't, then it'll tell this thing to reject the can off, right? So you can see, particularly at the front end of the, of the run, we'll get a few rejections, right? Yep. And then the staff can come over and check the machine by weighing the can on the scale to yep. make sure that's also, interesting. I, I have not seen this before. So it's actually an X-ray yeah, that's X checking that's checking liquid level, and I'm assuming foam inside the can does not affect it. It, it reads well, pretty. It can, right? Sure. If the foam is dense enough. Yeah. It'll trick it, right? Yeah. So that's why, like at the beginning of the run, I don't know if you saw, we always pull off the first few cases of beer. Yep. And then we manually weigh it just to check the machine. Yeah. Because that's, that's when it's most likely to trick the machine. Yep. Right now that we're running and settled in, usually it's not. And it's just rolling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It also looks for missing lids, right? So if the seamer, for some reason, were to miss the lid, it would also reject the can off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because there's no way we're running at 150 cans a minute. You can't manually. Correct. Can't Correct. Do. And this way we're checking every single can, right? Yep. So yep. Occasionally one will still slip through, but it catches. Yeah, that's then, slick. I've not seen this before either. Yeah. So there's two technologies for this, right? Okay. This is X-ray, but they also do one that's called gamma. Okay. And gamma uh, can read the density of the foam and predict how much of that will collapse into beer. Interesting. Right. So those are a little more expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem with gamma is that it's radioactive waste. Sure. So when the machine is done, you've got to pay a lot of money yeah. to dispose of it. I were to redo the line, I'm not allowed to move the gamma machine. I would have to break the state out in sure. order to get approval to move the gamma machine for this one I can move it, right? Yeah. And then you gotta get this tested periodically, right? We had it come out and sure. read it. And then we're date coding over here, right? So this is called an inverter block. Yep. So we're taking the cans and we're turning them upside down. We got a little air knife here to take the condensation off the bottom of the can. Yep. Yep. So if you look up here, on this side you can see they're blank. And then coming out here you can see it's got the date on it today and a time stamp. Very cool. And then we revert it back onto its face over there. Okay, and so this is where it's flipped back. Yep. Interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I've seen these trade shows before, but not. Oh, maybe maybe they run one similar when I was at 50. I can't remember. Is it just is, is it just like a worm gear in there that's yeah. manually flipping the bottle? Yeah. Yeah. Or the can? Yeah. It's really these things, these date coders, they don't like to print up because the ink falls back into the print head and gums it up. Right? That makes sense. So you want it to print sideways or down. Yeah. Down, ideally. So you got to turn the can upside down to do it, right? And this is the controller here for the for the date coder. So if we felt like it, we could make it print anything we wanted, like happy yeah. birthday or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Right? But we don't typically do that. Sure, sure. Yep. Yep. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. Interesting. So then it's moving, it moves two six packs at a time, and then it's actually building the case box on that side. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, that's sweet. Interesting. You can see this boy popping over here. This is slick as hell, man. That's sweet, man. So did this all kind of come in, was this, when you started and were operating, was this all in one, did it drop all like this or did you add different things along the way? Uh, well, we had a different can line to begin with. Okay. And uh, we've upgraded it a couple times. Now we're to this one. Yep. I think we're going to stick with for a minute. Yep. But uh, we bought this line as a, as a one project. Okay. Right. Uh, so we started by contacting KHS, who's the filler manufacturer. Yep. And then they connected us with the integrator and so forth, which helped to put all the parts together. And so through that guy, uh, you know, we sourced the DPAL, uh, case packer. Yep. We source those ourselves. Okay. But then uh the farming table into the line and then we had to do the roto feeder ourselves. Okay. We were pretty fortunate because uh you know a lot of these bigger equipment companies like the guys that build the roto feeder, they don't really like to share info with you if you didn't buy it from them. Yes. <laughs> but a really good friend of mine works for them. And so I called him and was like, hey, I got all the cereals. And he's like, here you go. Yeah. And, nice. And uh, that, that helped us. Oh, I bet. I bet. Are these boxes, are, does this actually tape these boxes or glue these boxes? Glue it glues, you can, okay. You can see this is the glue pod up here. Okay. And then uh, just past the white pusher, the yep. from in, there's a little blue head there. Oh, the okay. Interesting. 
And then when we do 12 packs, that stuff all has to move. Right? Yep. We're going to try to do that instead. Now, normally, you don't run 6 to 12 on the same day. Yeah. But we felt like challenging ourselves. <laughs> I had an absolute blast with the Warp Wing team, and I hope you enjoyed that big run through on the that amazing canning line that they have. It's really very sweet. And you're gonna wanna look out for part two of this, where we are going to be taking a deep dive on the brew house and how some of that operates. You're really not gonna wanna miss it. As always, I appreciate it, and I'll catch you next time.